Hello human beings, Cat 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 Cactus is here, and just as the world needed me most, I returned. Welcome back to your least favorite YouTube channel. And today, well, we're going to be doing a little continuation of last week's episode. Last, I guess, third year, because it's been four months. <laughs> well, you can say a lot of things about someone like me, but the one thing that you can't say is that I don't finish what I started. I'm a... <laughs> I'm gonna be continuing my my reading of my FNAF fan fiction. Depending on how long this takes, I might be able to get through the rest of it today with you guys. Who knows, right? Oh god. And yeah, let's just let's just get right into it. Let's just slide right in. So we're on day three now. So Henry Afton's just been shot in the eye, and his uh, robot companion has pulled it out with a pair of tweezers. And I guess uh, let's continue. Let's get some insight on what might be happening next. And this poor man's story. Okay. Day three, November 10th, 1984, 7.26 a.m. All right, so we're going to start off with some onomatopoeia, which I guess they taught me in third grade that that was uh, a good way to, to, to have, like, a hook into a paragraph. Whoosh! Pitter-patter, pitter-patter. So, it's raining, I guess. Henry had left the window in his bedroom open that night and the nights prior. It had been extraordinarily warm lately, especially for November. However, the hurricane had started in the middle of the night. Henry could barely sleep, even though he called 911 and the doctors sewed his arm up and gave him painkillers. I don't know if the doctors, like EMTs, would just hand out painkillers. I don't know if that's what they do, but maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? And told him it's going to be okay. I, I was really, you can see my, I was trying to kind of be a little bit edgier with my writing as I'm moving forward. So apparently they sent him home saying to get rest and that he would be fine. So I guess this will happen, this is what happens when you get shot. The police don't question you at all, they just send you right home the night of. <laughs> Whatever though, okay. Henry realized how foolish it was to leave the window open during a hurricane and immediately got up and closed it. The carpet was normally gray, but because of the rain, a large segment of it was a black void. All right, Henry sighed and rubbed his eyes. Then he let out a colossal, but not too loud gasp. I don't understand like that. Sounds like kind of an oxymoron I got going on here. Colossal, but not too loud. Okay, you know, I'm not gonna, not gonna harp on it. There was a thin, lanky figure standing in the doorway. It did not move. It just stared at him. Henry couldn't make out his eyes or face or anything of the sort. It was almost like a shadow, but it was actually a being. I guess I just had to clarify that. <laughs> Henry rubbed his eyes again, and they were crusty from the Sandman's visit. <laughs> All right. Uh, then I go off into a little, a little tangent here. Henry used to share. Henry used to share a joke with his deceased wife. He would call the crust in his eyes eye snot and they would always share a good laugh <laughs> like way to way to maintain the pacing you just go off a random anecdote but there was no time to think about that now henry reached into a drawer in his nightstand and pulled out a handgun he pulled the trigger at the black mass so he's immediately just trying to shoot whatever's in the doorway click nothing click nothing again okay so the gun just didn't go off to Henry's dismay, the gun was empty. He kept shaking it violently, but no matter what, Henry knew no bullets would just magically appear out of nowhere. This was no Disney movie. Happily ever afters do not exist. Though it may seem dark, things will go wrong. Your loved ones and pets will eventually die. You will eventually die. Happiness does not last forever. What the... It says that I wrote that. I was in fourth grade. What was wrong with me? Jeez, okay, you know, I don't even know where to start with that one. That's just, it's, why is it so heavy? <laughs> I'm just gonna take control of myself. Let's just continue. The figure did not budge. Suddenly the light flickered and came on. I guess that's just what happens. Henry was in shock. The figure was Bill, his robot, if you don't remember. His face was on the floor again, eyes and all. A red people could be seen in the dark hole on Bill's face. All right, so somehow the robot was turned off and it ended up in his doorway. And that, again, it seems kind of pointless unless it's like, I'm not, I'm just reading into this too much. Bill was still deactivated. Henry slowly walked up to him, almost slipping and falling on the soaked carpet. N n nothing a, a little hot g g glue can't fix, he stammered. <laughs> I guess that's, that's, he's still saying that. He's all alone and he's just... You know, he's like, you know what? 
I, I gotta use some hot glue for this because that's the, the best way to do anything. Well, I guess it's, yeah, I mean, he evidently hasn't learned because apparently the face fell off again and yet he's still gonna try to fix it with hot glue, which you'd think he would learn from his mistakes, but I guess not everybody's as smart as... Moving on. 5.27 p.m. Henry frowned, gazing through the window. Not that he could see through the window at all. It was covered in the still falling rain with the occasional flash of lightning followed by a loud boom of thunder. Henry felt trapped almost by the seemingly never ending downpour. Bill sensed Henry's distress. Is there anything I can assist you with? He said, cocking his head to the side slightly. A cup of coffee, please, Henry mumbled, tapping his fingers on the kitchen counter. Another? There was a glint, a glint of surprise in Bill's voice. He sighed. <sighs> Suit yourself. Okay, so he's being passive aggressive. It's what you were created for. Be grateful that you're alive. I'm just kidding. So another whole paragraph dedicated to a tangent about other animatronics that I just don't really feel like reading. Lost in his thoughts, Henry realized the coffee was cold, so I guess it's been a few minutes. He told Bill, Hey, could you heat this up again? Yes, sir, Bill said, starting to get annoyed. <laughs> he was tired of getting forced to do everything for Henry, but proceed with his actions. This is his third day of existence. Day four. November 11th. So, okay, this entire day is just really pointless. I, I really wanted to get to like the climax of the story. And so essentially it's just raining. He hears ru ru rustling around upstairs. And then he looks up there and Bill's standing there with his face off again. And he, if, if, I, if I may take an excerpt from this, Bill lay on the carpet, faceless again and on his back. Henry gasped and stepped back into the wall. He wanted to say, nothing a little hot glue can fix, but he was too horrified. <sighs> I guess I really just wanted to, like, drill that line in. So we're just going to go the next day. Because, you know, all right, so just to set the stage, it's still storming or whatever. And um, things are just, just ominous, crazy things are happening. Day 5, November 12th, 9.04 a.m. So it's the morning. Let's see. Let's see what wonders await our main character here. When Henry woke up and entered the main floor, he was groggy and confused. All the lights were on, even though he turned them off the, the night before. He saw the clo closet doors were open, too, and he looked inside. He saw the glass of the, of the case for the emergency axe had been broken open. So, who has an emergency axe in a glass case in their house? I, I don't think that that's a normal thing, but all right. He walked to the doorway of the basement and saw the door had been opened. The light was off down there. Henry mumbled. Huh? Henry thought he heard footsteps behind him. Then something pushed him and he fell down the creaky wooden stairs. All right, so he... Homicide. Henry received many cuts on his arms and legs and the splinters done dug far into them at every opportunity. When he landed, he hit his head on a steel table. So you'd think he would be dead, but no. He looked down and saw that both of his legs were... Right, so his legs are broken. Ah! He screamed. It was the worst pain he would ever feel. A voice made him look up. Okay. I'm done with you pushing me around! Three exclamation points in all caps, so we know this is very, very intense. When What Henry thought to be Bill stood at the top of the stairs. Bill had said that, but he did not closely resemble Bill. Instead of his friendly, smiling face, there was a very dark, golden ski mask. Don't know why I didn't just make it black, but okay. Blah, blah, blah. So he starts walking down the staircase. Bill stepped down to the 13 steps on the stairs. I'm done being your personal slave. This is madness. You only made me because you were helpless and jealous. Bill yelled loudly. I don't know how else you can yell. I feel like in the definition of yelling, that does kind of go hand in hand with being loud, but alas. That isn't true and you know it, Henry said, attempting to ignore the unbearable thing he endured. So yeah, this is such such great drama going on between these two characters. Shut up, maggot. <laughs> He's like a drill sergeant. Bill said mocking. You only say that because you don't want to accept the fact that I'm right. Besides, why does it matter? I could decide to ransack this joint and leave you to rot. Why did I? I never programmed you to kill me. Why are you doing this? Henry asked, afraid that Bill would attempt to, attempt to kill him again. I told you, maggot. I'm done being your slave. Bill screamed as loud as his voice box could go. Again, all caps. I hate you. Now I'll do something to you that hot glue won't be able to fix. I guess that was the, the build-up of 
repeating that line. I feel no sympathy for you, maggot. I don't know why he keeps, I guess that's the only insult I could think of is calling somebody like a, a fly larva. Bill stepped down three more steps and revealed the five foot emergency axe from behind him. So that's just very, a very ostentatious thing to keep around your house, I feel like. Whatever. Bill reached the bottom of the stairs. Harry tried to negotiate himself out of his situation. Bill, I'm sorry. You did your job and I overused you. You're free to do what you want. Okay. Good. Bill rasped. Now I can perform my breathtaking act. Bill swung the axe behind his head. Harry yelled, Bill, no! Squish. Crick. <laughs> With one swift strike of an axe, Henry's life was brought to an end. <laughs> so he's dead. If not for Henry's fall down the stairs, it would have been a quick death. Unfortunately, it was not. I guess I just had to say that even though it was already pretty clear. Even though Henry was dead, Bill struck his limp body multiple times with all his might. Blood is going everywhere. I... Like, this whole thing is so edgy. Bill dropped the axe and grabbed Henry's neck and dragged him out the stairs. Henry's neck was slippery with blood, so Bill dragged him by the armpits and shed. He didn't stop cackling. Okay, so I guess he's laughing the whole time. <laughs> like, what? How did he have this in him? He had no emotions programmed, and he managed to become this, like, sociopath within a matter of, like, less than a week. Bill picked up Henry's dead body. When he reached the kitchen, he dropped the corpse on the wide counter. This event will not be forgotten. You, Henry, I've been will be worn as a trophy. Bill got a knife from out of a pot drawer and slit Henry's body open. He started with the arms and upper torso. He pulled bones out and fused them with his endoskeleton. I don't even know how that's possible. He used Henry's skull and the lower section of his body too. Bill did not use every bone. He laughed during the process. Bill brought the remains of Henry and the axe outside. He went into Henry's shed and got a shovel. Bill started digging a grave. He stopped many times, almost falling because of his laughter. I don't know why I had to keep, like, like being so specific about that. On the side, he made a pile of the dirt he dug out. By the time he, the hole was done, a small coating of rain had formed at the bottom. Bill kicked the deceased body into the deep hole. He then used the shovel to put the dirt back in. He stuck the axe into the dirt matter of Henry's grave. This graveyard may be small, but it has an important meaning to me, Bill said out loud. He was dying because of the rain, but he ignored the pain. He didn't care. Bill just stood there and laughed. Okay, I Bill eventually went in, living the rest of his life in the basement. The other animatronics went to a new location. Afton's body was found six years later. Bill's whereabouts remain unknown. Okay, that's the end. But that's a little... I can't believe I just contradicted myself within the last few sentences. Bill lived the rest of his life in the basement, and then literally two sentences later, Bill set, Bill's whereabouts remain unknown. Like, <laughs> I, wanted, I guess I wanted to create some intrigue with the ending. Yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed that, I guess. I don't really... I don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean, I, that easy content it was for me. So, that's that's my little story that I made. So, yeah that's it well what is it that i normally say remember it's cacti not cactuses stay prickly